In this section, we're going to cover acid-base equilibria. And in chapter 4, strong acids and strong bases were introduced. And here, I have listed all the strong acids over here on the left and all the strong bases on the right. You're going to need to know and you're going to memorize these strong acids and strong bases and everything else we can consider to be weak. So in chapter 4, we were able to study the, the, the stoichiometry of strong acids and strong bases. And the reason for that is because they fully dissociate in solution. So if we have a strong acid, HA, and we put this in aqueous solution, it's going to fully dissociate into H plus ions in solution plus A minus ions in solution. Okay, And we can indicate a, a, a forward arrow here because this will fully dissociate. And that means one mole of HA is going to give us one mole of H plus and one mole of A minus. Okay, but the question is why do we not introduce weak acids and bases way back in chapter four? And the reason for that is because they partially dissociate in, in solution. So if this was a strong acid case and, and bases work the same way, and we compare that to what we see with a weak acid or base, if we have a weak acid HA in aqueous solution, and we get this partial dissociation, or we have to write an equilibrium. Okay, so this is going to give us H plus in aqueous solution plus A minus in aqueous solution. And we studied equilibrium in the last section, and we can't introduce weak acids and weak bases and we, until we understand what that equilibrium is. So since we have an equilibrium, one mole of HA is not going to equal one mole of H plus or one mole of A minus. So we have to understand what an equilibrium is. And for acids, our equilibrium expression is going to be given a Ka. And for bases, we have a KB. Okay? If we have strong acids and bases, the KA and the KB is going to be very, very large. If we have weak, we're going to be in the range of, say, 10 to the minus 2 to 10 to the minus 5. Okay? So we're going to list a bunch of equilibrium constants to characterize the strength or weakness of these weak acids and bases. And now that we have equilibrium introduced, we can get into the theory and some, do some calculations of weak acids and weak bases. And we're going to start by looking at kind of a historical perspective of these acids and bases, and then go into some calculations.